High Sheriff, Deputy Lord Lieutenant, the Lord Mayor, the leader of Newcastle City Council, members of the military, ladies and gentlemen, welcome very much to Newcastle Central Station and to the launch of East Coast Locomotive 91111 for the Fallen. It's here in Newcastle where we first launched our popular train naming policy in 2011. And we continued this policy most recently by naming the train Durham Cathedral. Here actually at Newcastle Central Station. This railway tradition supports people and places, communities and culture. And of course the history and the heritage right across our route. The whole of the rail industry is rightly marking the centenary of World War I. Fourth Poland is East Coast's individual tribute to those who went to war and to those who made the ultimate sacrifice. This includes 20,000 rail workers signed up to the war who never returned. It also recognises the contribution of those 700,000 men and many women who worked in the rail industry during the Great War. But the railways actually helped Great Britain mobilise the war in 1914. The railways transported men, military, vehicles and machinery, vehicles and horses, and food and war materials across the country across those terrible years. We've been working with, on this loco with five regiments on the East Coast route and in the coming weeks and months it will take the some of those stories, forward, images, facts and the history behind the regiment and the great war to millions of our passengers across the country.
honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to say a huge thank you to North to East Coast Rail for dedicating this train in honor of the fall. Wherever it goes, it will serve as a reminder of the sacrifice made by soldiers, sailors, and airmen during the Great War. It is fitting to have this naming ceremony in Newcastle, as at the start of World War I, the Northeast was enjoying industrial prosperity. Indeed, Newcastle pioneered the railway expansion in one of the largest railway junctions in the world. A particular note during World War I was the raising of Powell's battalions. Formed from close-knit communities, these were men who were encouraged to enlist, train, and serve together. Sadly, many of them were also to die together. The Northumberland Fusiliers had several Powell's battalions. One of them was the 17th North Eastern Railway Pioneer Battalion. The battalion landed at the yard on the 21st of November 1915 and fought in the second battle of the Somme at Arras and on the Hindenburg Line. The battalion was disbanded here in Newcastle on the 27th of June 1915. The Northumberland Fusiliers also raised four battalions of Knights and Scottish, and I'm delighted to see soldiers and veterans from 101 Regiment, Royal Artillery here, as the regiment retains the link to the Tyneside Scottish. The North East has traditionally recruited the highest number of recruits to our armed forces, and World War I was no exception. Indeed, it was on these very platforms 100 years ago that thousands of men said a tearful farewell to their families and loved ones. Many of them would never return, and we can only imagine the pain and the anguish that the families went through in losing these young men. The number of men from the Northeast killed during World War I is unknown, but it is estimated to be around 100,000. It is therefore interesting to note the number on this train, 91111, or to put it another way, 91,111, not far short of that total. Thank you very much. Lord Mayor, ladies and gentlemen, 100 years ago, after Lord Horlane visited Newcastle on October the 10th, 1914, recruiting began in earnest for the Tyneside Scottish. Initially, the committee of local dignitaries, including the Lord Mayor, took for one battalion of around 1,000 men. In the event, by November, they had over 5,000 men in four battalions. All four took part in July 1916's Battle of the Somme. And one soldier, Piper George Griffiths, wrote afterwards, At the given signal, we jumped from our trenches and struck up our pipes. It was like all hell let loose. I got so far, they got caught on some barbed wire. After I got entangled, I had to abandon my pipes to take up my rifle. Fellow piper, Willie Scott, a shipyard worker from Elzig, was still ahead of me playing. <coughs> when I reached the German trenches and jumped in, the first man I saw was Willie, dead, but still holding his pipe. Casualties that day, almost 500 dead, 500 missing, 1,500 wounded. But today the Tyneside Scottish still exists. 204, Tyneside Scottish Battery, Royal Artillery, is based in Kingston Park. And the Army Reservists there train on the multiple launch rocket system, better known as MLRS. They also have roles for radio signalers, truck drivers, chefs and medics. They play a key role in Britain's defence. They can only do so with the support of their employers. Come 
companies all around northeast England, large and small, including railway companies such as East Coast. So I thank them, those companies, for their support. And I thank all the reservists for their continuing commitment. Thank you.